The Far Cry franchise is pretty well traveled, having backpacked from tropical islands and dusty deserts to snow-capped mountains. Now, with 14 years of cultural experiences under its belt, the series is finally ready to visit one of the most majestic landscapes of them all, the western wilds of rural America? Hi, I'm Greg from the Leaderboard, and this is 107 Facts About Far Cry 5. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. <laughs> Far Cry 5 was released worldwide on March 27th of this year. It was developed by Ubisoft Montreal, the same studio responsible for handling the franchise since Far Cry's original developer, Crytek, sold Ubisoft the rights back in 2006. Shipping a game as ambitious as Far Cry 5 was no simple task, requiring development assistance from several other Ubisoft branches including Ubisoft Toronto, Ubisoft Kiev, Ubisoft Shanghai, and Ubisoft Reflections. Far Cry 5 was originally scheduled for release on February 27th, but the game was delayed another month so the team could ship out a more polished product. In the eternally true words of famed Nintendo designer Shigeru Miyamoto, a delayed game is eventually good, but a bad game is bad forever. The game uses Ubisoft's Dunia 2 engine, a successor to the original Dunia engine that implements open world features such as a weather system, which premiered in Far Cry 3. Far Cry 5 is available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, with enhanced 4K support for those lucky enough to own a PS4 Pro or Xbox One. Despite being fifth in name, Far Cry 5 is the 11th installment in the franchise, following hot off the heels of 2016's prehistoric powerhouse, Far Cry Primal. Far Cry 5 is the first game in the series to take place in the United States, replacing the series' more exotic locales for a place out in the boonies of Hope County, Montana. Hope County is not a real place found on any map of Montana, and I should know, I'm a Montana boy myself. This decision was made primarily to create a sense of separation from the current events in the real world while still feeling authentic and believable. Previous games in the series followed a similar suit, like the fictitious Himalayan country Kairat in Far Cry 4 or 3's Indonesian-inspired paradise, the Rook Islands. Siege anyone? But why Montana? The location was suggested with little rhyme or reason. Struck by the realization no one on the team knew a single thing about the treasure state, everybody quickly went down the research rabbit hole. It wasn't long before they quickly fell in love with Montana's beautiful scenery and frontier attitude. To create a more believable environment, the development team spent weeks exploring the mountains of Montana. This instance, it wasn't the first time research took a more hands-on approach. The group held a similar excursion to Nepal during the development of Far Cry 4. Thousands of photos were taken during the trip to capture the essence and majesty of Montana. With a process called photogrammetry, many objects were snapped at every angle and scanned into the game's engine as 3D objects. The core design philosophy of the game hinged upon tying together themes of chaos and beauty. This promise meant capturing the beauty of rural America while still placing players in the familiar trappings of survival and desperation made famous by the series. More than just some pretty pixels, the developers viewed Montana as an extension of a character, lovingly incorporating its identity into every crack and crevice of Hope County. They used everything from catchy logos and local businesses to the wildlife and trees. Speaking of trees, at one point the team discovered a birch tree with initials and names carved around a heart. They loved the happy accident so much they left it in the game's assets. Hopefully CK plus LL did last forever. According to creative director and executive producer Dan Hay, the team had been dreaming about bringing the Far Cry series closer to home ever since wrapping up production of Far Cry 3. It all started with the simple idea of wanting to create a western set in modern times and firmly rooted in American culture. However, the most potent influence for the US set was this harrowing notion nagging Dan Hay. What happens in your backyard is maybe even more dangerous than something that happens a thousand miles away. It was a terrifying thought and a bold new direction for the franchise. Speaking of the man with the plan, Dan Hay has a long history working with the Far Cry franchise, filling in as executive producer for Far Cry 3, 4, and Primal. When thinking through the possible threats that could create anarchy within America today, it didn't take long for the team to get hooked on cults. According to Hay, the creation of a character that has his beliefs rooted in faith rather than merely being crazy for crazy's sake was the catalyst that led to pursuing this cultist concept. This research led to the creation of Far Cry 5's silver tongue tyrant Joseph Seed. Hayes' impressions of modern America and its return to relative unease during the late 2000s mortgage crisis informed much of the game's creation. It reminded him of younger days as a child growing up in the 80s, worrying that the world was in its final days during the peak of the Cold War. The cult motif was also inspired by more current political events, both across the globe and in America the most prominent being the 2016 occupation of the Masher National Wildlife Refuge, where armed militants took residence in the Oregon-based National Park for
for 40 days. The developers put a lot of effort into making their cult believable. They consulted with real professionals in the field to find out what caused these organizations to tick. One such expert was Rick Allen Ross, a deprogrammer and executive director of the Cult Education Institute. According to Ross, the three primary characteristics that define a destructive cult involved charismatic leadership, coercive persuasion, and committing harm to others. Qualities all present and accounted for when conceptualizing Ubisoft's corrupt clique, the project at Eden's Gate. Funny enough, many team members had cliche ideas of what passed for a cult before any research came in. Creative director Dan Hay himself imagined people in weird robes doing weird incantations as goats walked around. Fortunately, naive notions of these went away rather quickly. In fact, Ross found Eden's Gate to be a powerful representation of real-world cults. Historically speaking, nothing the group does in-game should be considered exaggerated or beyond the realm of possibility. Despite first glances, Ubisoft insists Eden's Gate is not a Christian cult, but rather a melting pot of ideologies hijacked from a variety of belief systems. Much like the logic for keeping the setting fictitious, the team wanted to create some distance from current events while still maintaining a level of cultural commentary. Examples that give credence to this philosophy are a verse from the Quran scribbled on the wall behind cult leader Joseph Seed seen towards the end of the Amazing Grace trailer. There's also a white iron cross used as the cult's religious symbol, which bears some striking similarities to both the cross of Scientology and Christianity. Some argue it's possible a little bit of Nazi Germany snuck into the symbol's design, most notably the Third Reich's military medal made prominent during the Second World War. Nonetheless, Ubisoft assures Eden's Gate is not a white supremacist group. Far Cry 5's subject matter ignited a bit of backlash when unveiled back in the summer of 2017. The key art alone, which had the game's villains posed in a scene resembling Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, was chastised by every corner of the internet for its portrayal of average rural Americans as gun-hoarding Christian extremists. One disgruntled fan even started a petition urging Ubisoft to change or outright cancel the game. They declared the game as offensive to Americans and an insult to the fan base. While most who read the petition agree it was most likely trolling, this event only added to the controversy. In a PR move, Ubisoft addressed one of the demands outlined in the petition, where they assumed this was a white nationalist cult, prompting Ubisoft to release a wider version of the original cover art with a black cult member dining alongside his brainwashed brethren. Some gamers believe that Far Cry 5's plot is based on the real-life police raid on the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas back in 93. Players step into the boots of a deputy sheriff sent to Hope County on orders to disband a destructive doomsday cult and stop its master manipulator leading his flock through violence. While the game is not based on these real events, Joseph Seed himself, the game's main antagonist and self-appointed preacher, bears a striking resemblance to the Branch Davidian leader, David Koresh, right down to his tinted aviators, rockstar swagger, and obsession with assault rifles. The game's lead writer, Drew Holmes, is known for his work helping pen various games in the Red Faction and Saints Row series. He also co-wrote Bioshock Infinite's DLC. You could say the man's pretty well versed in reciting religious psychobabble. Can't call anything a cult without a bunch of hypnotic hymns. There are a total of 10 hymns to be found throughout the mountains of Montana, each with different meanings and interpretations to different sects of the group. Every hymn and hum heard throughout the game was written by award-winning producer, songwriter, and composer Dan Romer, whose work you may recognize from the Netflix original drama Beasts of No Nation. The Bobby Shin Nashville Choir in Tennessee performed all of the hymns for the soundtrack. With the hymns ingrained in every nook and cranny of Hope County, the team decided to write the rest of the game's ambient score in a way that would complement the rich lyrics. Outside the manipulative melodies of Hope County's rapture ranting reverend, you can listen to any number of pop culture hits from the comfort of your car radio. Genres may vary depending on the region you're road tripping through, from Holland Valley's mixed tape of favorite crowd pleasers to Henbane River's love of 1950s doo-wop. Typically known for their menacing, larger-than-life bad guys, the creative team took a slightly different approach when crafting Far Cry 5's head henchmen. Rather than focus on one single villain, Hope County's home to an entire family of dastardly degenerates in dire need of detainment. At the top are Joseph Seed, family patriarch and self-appointed leader of the militaristic doomsday cult known as the Project at Eden's Gate. His followers call him the Father. After hearing the voice of God, Joseph believes the end of days are upon us, and the burden falls on him to prepare and save as many wayward souls as possible. The Father was born in 1976, making him 42 years old during the events of the game. The second youngest main antagonist in the series
series after Far Cry 3's 27-year-old favorite villain, Voss Montenegro. Joseph Seed was voiced by Greg Brick, who you may recognize from his supporting roles in Saw 5, Shoot 'em Up, and Poor Boy's Game. Dan Hay was apparently so captivated by Brick's audition that had he been an actual leader of a doomsday cult, Hay states he would have joined his cause in a heartbeat. Far Cry 5's other voice talent includes Steve Myers and John Tench, who respectively play the roles of Nick Rye and Richard Dutch Roosevelt. You may know Byers as his portrayal as Sergeant Cam Henry on the Netflix series Slasher, while Tench is perhaps best known for his reoccurring role in another one of Ubisoft's other franchises, Watch Dogs, where he plays the finger-flipping hacker T-Bone Grady. Joseph has a few lieutenants called the Heralds, a psychotic trio of siblings hell-bent on fulfilling the father's will. The eldest brother Jacob, nicknamed the Soldier, is a former army marksman with a penchant for pain, acting as both the cult's primary recruiter and protector. The youngest brother, John, known as the Baptist, acts as the family's lawyer, invoking faith and violence to secure land and resources vital to the cult's survival. And finally, there's Faith, aka the Siren. As the youngest sibling of the bunch, Faith appeases the people and keeps the congregation in a constant state of bliss. The names of each seed family member is teeming with biblical connotations. Joseph's in particular poses analogies to Joseph of the Old Testament, whose constant reliance on a higher power saved Egypt from starvation. Did we mention he also had dreams of grandeur guided by the voice of God? So just who is this brave rookie renegade sent from high heaven to smite the wicked and shepherd their flock away from the promised land? Why, you of course. That's right, Far Cry Faithful, for the first time in its 14-year history, we finally have a full-blown character creator for making our protagonist how we see fit. This series shakeup was done to match the game's new direction in non-scripted storytelling and help enforce a stronger bond between players and their avatars. The team wanted players to imagine themselves as the hero of the story and see themselves reflected as such on screen, heightening the sense of immersion in the process. Consequently, this is also the first Far Cry game to feature a playable female protagonist. Combined with the ability to adjust your race via a robust palette of skin tones, you have the most inclusive Far Cry caper to date. As mentioned before, a significant shift in Far Cry 5 over its previous entries is its focus on non-linear and emergent moments. After a brief encounter with cult leader Joseph Seed during the onset of your adventure, players are free to pick a direction and start roaming the world as they see fit with no immediately apparent story or side objectives to follow. Hay refers to this magic formula for architecting open world chaos as the anecdote factory, because no two players will experience the game in the same way. While it's easy to assume the successes of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild proved influential in developing this unique take on open world exploration, the truth is much of the game's concepts and design philosophy were already set in motion before Link awakened to a world corrupted by calamity. True to the series' roots, there is complete freedom in how players approach any given situation. Whether you choose to contact an enemy outpost with a silent but deadly compound bow, or smash an oil tanker through its front gate like an explosive battering ram from hell, is entirely up to you. Hate falling off the path? You might be disappointed to learn that those good mini-maps made the chopping block this time around. There's a good reason for their absence, though. This encourages seamless and natural exploration of the game world. Instead, the minimap got replaced by a little magnetic spinny thing called the compass. While it provides little else than a 360 degree approach to navigating your surroundings, the upside is you won't be bogged down by intrusive waypoints and objective markers telling you where to go next. While compensating for the lack of direction, a new mechanic called resistance meter helps merge main quests and side quests much more seamlessly. Whether rescuing town folk, liberating outposts, or hunting a bear, nearly everything you do in the game earns you these digits. Hope County splits into three main regions, each ruled by one of the trio of the father's psychotic siblings. Accumulate enough resistance points and you'll grab their attention, progressing the story at your own pace. Revealing new points of interest has never been easier and they'll naturally occur as you explore the world, interact with your surroundings, and forge relationships with the locals. There are three difficulty levels in the game, easy, medium, and hard. No matter which one you choose, the game will still get progressively more difficult as you grow your ranks of resistance and liberate more regions. Dubbed the Chosen, these elite enforcers are handpicked by the father himself and come better equipped than your garden variety disciple. They can even call in machine gun loaded biplanes to rain hell from above. The Chosen are just one example of how enemies react more intuitively to players' actions. The artificial intelligence can track your performance and alter the enemy strategy. Bushes have long been a critical point of camouflage for the series. Because of the switch to Montana farmland from the series' more natural jungle environment, Ubisoft added tall grass 
grass and cornfields to help provide the same cover effect. While the Far Cry series is no slouch when it comes to the size and scope of its beautiful locales, Far Cry 5's is positively gargantuan. By scrapping a more linear story, this gives the developers more time to fill the game world with exciting activities and areas to explore. Vehicles are back with a vengeance, baby! Thanks to the sprawling scale of Montana's map, there's never been a better time to jump behind the wheel for some mayhem. From big rigs to tractor trailers to muscle cars and monster trucks, auto lovers of all walks of life are sure to find their perfect dream machine. Best of all, vehicles can be outfitted and customized with all manner of weapons, gadgets, and paint jobs, like adding a mulcher to tractors or machine gun barreled turrets for making Swiss cheese out of saviors. Previously restricted to both land and sea, players can finally take to the skies in fully pilotable planes and helicopters. Admiring the beauty of the grounds below is a special treat when you're not engaged in adrenaline pumping aerial dogfights, that is. It wouldn't be Far Cry without a hefty arsenal of Rambo S guns at your disposal. Staples shotguns, pistols, assault rifles, and rocket launchers complete your arsenal, as well as a new compound bow. Weapons can be tweaked and tailored to your liking, from adding scopes and suppressors to custom paint jobs. Thanks to Montana's flat fields and lack of elevation in some areas, long range combat underwent a bit of tweaking. Shooting over long distances now adds a realistic drop to bullets. Remember to adjust your aim accordingly so your shots don't take a deep dirt dive. Far Cry 5 also features the return of an old aiming style from previous games in the series that lets players lean and peek around cover. More significant emphasis has been placed on close quarters combat, as seen by the full range of melee weapons available, from standard daggers and baseball bats to more devastating pitchforks and sledgehammers. Variety indeed is the spice of life, and this is no more apparent than in Far Cry 5's perk system. From parachutes and booby traps to health boosts and ammo bags, there's no shortage of impressive abilities to master. Perks are unlocked via perk points, which are acquired by completing a laundry list of challenges, like finding collectibles, seizing outposts, and more often than not, killing opponents with specific weapons. Night and day cycles made it into the game, providing unique gameplay advantages depending on the time of day. Night owls rocking a more stealth-centered approach might want to stick to the moonlight when enemy awareness is limited. Not having a full 24-hour cycle was never an option to the developers, who wanted the environment to behave naturally. It was the team's vision that players already knew the rules of play before picking up the controller. Just how carried away did the developers get with the world, you ask? You might want to shield little Timmy's eyes for this next one because things are about to get all National Geographical. Mother Nature's alive and viral in the Badlands of Hope County, meaning you might accidentally catch a glimpse of the local wildlife getting busy. When not peeping on animals' private affairs, you can hunt them for valuable pelts and materials. Hope County is teeming with wildlife just itching for a meal. From the smallest game like ducks and skunks to great big burly bears, all can be found in this stretch of land. Wow, can't even spot a single animal? Check out some magazines. Gathering magazines littered around Hope County will give you tips and locations on favorite hunting spots. However, none of the game are as terrifying or vicious as the mighty Wolverine, a relentless furball of fury riddled with murderous intent. Taking inspiration from Far Cry Primal, the game introduces an animal recruitment system dubbed Fangs for Hire, allowing dogs, cougars, and even bears to be trained to bite baddies on command. Our personal favorite is a pupper named Boomer who can mark enemies and steal their weapons. Weapons. Oh, who's a good boy? Money makes the world go round in Far Cry 5. Players need it for crafting more powerful weapons and pimping rides. A neat trick to help line your coffers involves farming and selling animal hides. Simply toss some bait to lure all manner of hungry critters. Take them out and repeat the cycle until you're rolling in riches. There are many hidden bunkers and treasure rooms scattered around Hope County. These strongholds come packed with perk points, weapons, and mountains of cash. Though you'll typically have to solve some mini puzzles and break teasers to gain access. For players that just want to unwind and relax, fishing might just be what the doctor ordered. As both an entirely new addition to the series and an integral part of Montana culture, Ubisoft pulled out all the stops to flesh out one of the most highly sophisticated and addicting fly fishing experiences on the market. In fact, the fishing minigame in Far Cry 5 is so robust that one of Ubisoft's playtesters spent hours catching trout as his fellow guns for hire were busy 
liberating nearby outposts. You never have to fight the good fight alone thanks to Far Cry 5's numerous guns for hire. Throughout your adventures in cultist extermination, players can earn the loyalty of AI-controlled allies, each one boasting their own unique set of skills and reasons for fighting the good fight. There are tons of colorful characters to recruit, from the plucky pilot Nick Rye and his ability to call in air raids, to the pyromaniac Sharky Boshaw and his flair for flamethrowers and fireworks. Both the Guns for Hire and Fangs for Hire systems were heavily inspired by the Beastmaster hunts of Far Cry Primal. In Primal, players were able to tame a handful of legendary beasts like wolves and sabertooths and ride them into battle. But don't sweat it if you're not a fan of animals. People may be the only zoo you need. According to Dan Hay, there are over 65 uniquely designed characters kicking it in Colt County. For comparison's sake, previous Far Cry games averaged a mere 18 to 20. For starters, there's your ragtag group of grassroots freedom fighters who snagged its name and logo from the region's local fictional baseball team, the Hope County Cougars. Two-player co-op returns, though this time it includes the entire campaign. Previous games typically set limitations on the mode, like only being able to conduct side quests or dedicated mini campaigns together. This friends for hire system doesn't allow for random matchmaking or couch co-op play. It's restricted only to people online in your friends list. Players can drop in and out of each other's games on a whim, though only the host can accept missions, recruit and command guns for hire, and retain any story-based progression. That's not to say player 2 is leaving empty-handed. They'll still get to keep all of their character-based progression, including guns collected, money earned, and perks unlocked. If you're feeling frisky, you can even turn on friendly fire for some competitive PvP action. Do you want to try your hand at creating your custom combat zones? Far Cry 5 brings back the map editor, only this time with revamped creation tools that let you craft and share your preachy playgrounds with Far Cry fans across the globe. The world of Far Cry 5 is positively brimming with nods and easter eggs to many of Ubisoft's properties, but none as prolific as the mustached, overall wearing rabid figure caught bobbing about in the game's official debut trailer. On the subject of bobble-headed homages, Far Cry 3's Voss Montenegro can be spotted dancing on the dashboard of several vehicles, wearing his presumable icon hula skirt and ukulele. For the Far Cry faithful, 5 comes boasting with some of the craziest collector's editions we've seen to date. They have deluxe editions, season passes, and steelbooks all bursting with digital delights. However, the cream of the crop can be found exclusively in Ubisoft's online storefront. These individual box sets, the Father Edition and Hope County Edition, both come with gold versions of the game, an exclusive steelbook, double-sided map of Hope County, and an original soundtrack CD. The difference? The former snags you a statue of the creepy cultist Joseph Seed, while the latter sports a limited Hope County Deer Skull trophy to mount proudly on your mantle. Hallelujah, music buffs! Thanks to an exclusive partnership between Mondo and Ubisoft, fans can also pick up the Ubisoft Store exclusive Mondo Edition, complete with a stunning vinyl containing 12 tracks from the game. Those willing to dip a little deeper in the donation pile can snag the GameStop exclusive Resistance Edition. Priced at $199.99 US, this pinnacle of patriotism comes packing the gold version of the game alongside a 16.5 inch statue of gun for hire Nick Rye, standing valiantly alongside his loyal canine companion Boomer. Far Cry 5 Season Pass adds a little B-movie flair to the mix, tossing players in three all-new adventures against zombies, Martians, and the Viet Cong. Season Pass owners also received a download code for Far Cry 3 Classic Edition. This remastered version won't release separately for another four weeks, giving early adopters more Far Cry bang for their buck. Before Far Cry 5's official launch, Ubisoft released a short 30-minute film titled Inside Eden's Gate. As you may assume, it explored the fictional cult of Eden's Gate. It's available to watch on Amazon Prime. The live-action short featured a group of vloggers hoping to investigate a claim by one of their viewers by visiting the Montana town. However, their plan veers wildly off course when they run into the charismatic cult leader, Joseph C. Once again, I'm Greg, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Far Cry 5. Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.